The WPI Fellowship is a cultural and academic and media tour of the United States. You visit about 20 newsrooms, six universities, you visit think tanks, you visit schools, and it's an opportunity to, I guess, immerse yourself in America and just take a pulse of the country. I guess one of the most interesting things I learned was that the decline in print wasn't really a drift of readers, it was most severely a drift of advertisers, so the business model was really challenged. Newspapers that you know, printed a daily product all of a sudden uh, had competition for, adv for advertising from the web, from third party advertisers, from search engines, and so the business model of employing lots of journalists in a big news organisation uh, just didn't add up anymore. Newspapers had to find a way to, um, I guess, charge more and find different uh, streams of revenue. If you're the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, people really want to read you. They still sell a million and two million copies a day. That's a million for the Times and two million for the Wall Street Journal. They have brilliant journalists and people are prepared to pay for it. But if you're a small regional newspaper or even a mid-sized regional newspaper, what is your unique content? So I saw a lot of things like newspapers becoming incredibly focused on local coverage. For example, the Star Tribune in Minneapolis has um, focused its coverage so much that it doesn't even focus on Minneapolis anymore. It focuses on those suburbs where people live. So if you work in Minneapolis, you probably live in a suburb um, you know, 10, 20 kilometers from the city. That newspaper now covers the school board in your area, the council in your area. There's a whole um, set of media startups now that have been created by the change in the business model. So I kind of call them the post-newspaper publishers. So when newspapers shrunk and changed their coverage in some places, uh, a lot of people in the business felt that things like public policy weren't getting covered anymore and they needed to be. So a bunch of not-for-profit news organisations set up, uh, like the Texas Tribune in Austin or MinPost in uh, Minneapolis and St Paul. And these are businesses that are uh, funded by foundation money and public donations and they write about things like um, climate change policy, they write about school policy, they write about you know justice and you know child justice and things like that and they just give a voice to those kind of um, articles that aren't getting published in the mainstream press anymore. I think most people uh, still watch TV and read papers, but there is an increasing group who on their second screen, which might be an iPad or a phone, uh, use that for their news consumption. So basically, if you're an established media organisation, you have to have uh, something in that space. You have to be pushing news out to people, be it a tweet or a link, and then they can come back and see your website. Now, the interesting thing about that is it means people aren't accessing your website through the homepage. They're coming in kind of through the back door, through social media. So every story that you have and is presented on a page has to give a, a reader the functionality of, of the home page. You know, you've got to be able to navigate around and link to other content. Access is the main thing. Um, as a journalist by yourself, you wouldn't get an hour with the editor-in-chief of the Boston Globe or an hour with the editor of the New York Times. That is the strength of the program, that you meet people that you otherwise wouldn't. The second thing is the range. Uh, you go to about 26 different media organisations, social media, digital media, established media, new media, TV, radio, print. Um, it really is an opportunity to see how they are um, thriving or seeking to thrive in a changing uh, media landscape.